Church, please join me in a word of prayer. Holy and gracious God, you bring us into a new year together as your community of saints, as we listen to your word, as we are fed and strengthened by your sacrament. Uh, Father, we give you thanks for all the many blessings that you give us in this life that we may not immediately recognize, but through patience and through waiting, uh, we know that your word of promise is true and will be fulfilled. So Father, give us this reminder this morning as we listen to your word. So with that, Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, that these may be found acceptable and pleasing in your sight. For you alone, O Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, it's fair to say that this is an exciting time for Grace Lutheran Church, not just because it's Advent in the Christmas season, but it's because it's the first Advent and Christmas season that we get to celebrate together in our very own worship space with our own Christmas tree, uh, with Evergreen, uh, with our uh, own Advent wreath, with these great uh, services that we're going to be having throughout the week. Uh, and so this is an exciting time because these are things that I know that we're going to treasure in years to come as great traditions uh, that we establish now um, as a community of faith. And for me, it calls to mind a lot of the traditions around Christmas time that I grew up with, as I'm sure it reminds many of you of a lot of Christmas memories that you have of Christmas past uh, with your families and your loved ones. Uh, and while it's fair to say that most of these traditions are ones that I enjoyed uh, and look back fondly on, uh, like many of you, I'm sure there's a few of those Christmas traditions uh, that you didn't exactly look forward to uh, every year the same way that you did uh, all the others. Uh, for example, every single Christmas morning that I can remember, before my sister and I were allowed to go in and open up our presents in the living room, uh, my mother insisted that my sister and I sit on the bottom step and have our picture taken with our excited faces on to send out to all of our relatives every single year. And keep in mind, this was the 90s and early 2000s, so there were no smartphones. So most years there was something wrong with the camera, like it was out of battery or there was no film. Uh, so we had to wait an extra 10 minutes, which if you're a young boy or girl, and you're waiting for what you think are great presents around the corner under the tree, then this is torture. It feels like an eternity. <laughs> now more than ever, after the season of the, the pandemic that we've been through together, I believe we live in a world that desires instant happiness and instant gratification in all that it seeks to do. Things like movie theaters are already becoming a thing of the past, uh, because as many of us know, we did, won't want to drive 10 minutes, uh, wait in line for another 10 minutes, and then watch another 15 minutes or so of previews. It's much easier to sit in our living rooms and watch movies streaming right to our devices, on our apps and on our TVs. While I believe that a lot of these advances in technology uh, that we're able to appreciate today are genuinely gifts of God that he gives us to make our lives easier and to make humanity's life uh, healthier, but I believe the season of Advent comes around to teach us this important virtue or this important fruit of the spirit of patience, of waiting, of restraining our desire to be instantly entertained and satisfied. We may have some degree of control over what or when we eat or what movies we watch and where, but we have no control over how soon Christmas is going to come, so we as a community of faith, have no choice but to sit and to wait. The season of Advent gives us an occasion to pause and put ourselves on, God, on God's timetable and not our own. It's easy to forget when we have a bound and complete Bible, like we're able to appreciate today, but many of God's promises that we read about throughout Holy Scripture had to be delayed God didn't instantly give them their promise immediately, but sometimes his promise being fulfilled took years, took generations, and sometimes even centuries. Consider Abraham for a moment, who God promised that he and his wife Sarah would give birth uh, to a son, Isaac. But between the promise and the fulfillment, it takes years for Isaac to be born. Abraham and Sarah were already advanced in years, and even an immediate a pregnancy would be considered a miracle in this situation. But even in their old age, God had them wait 
he gave them the ability to wait and have patience. And Abraham continues to trust God and wait patiently for his promise to come true. It's fitting for us in the West that Advent would fall during this cold season. Because many, for, for many ancient people, this was a time of waiting. There were no plants to be tended to by farmers. There were no fruits to be harvested by those who were gatherers. But when all the other plants have died, the evergreen tree retains its bright, lively green color. And within the context of Christian worship, evergreens like wreaths and trees began to be used as a reminder or even a promise that even though most of nature is lifeless and dead during the winter season, that one day life will return to the earth and there will be another green, bright harvest. But in the meantime, we simply have to wait. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up from David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. Even though God's people were being carried off into exile during this time, God gives them hope that he will fulfill the promise he made of an everlasting king from the line of David. But they waited and waited and waited, generation after generation passing away. Many did lose hope, and many did give up on the promise of God. And yet this did not stop the faithful from trusting in God's eternal word. As if to say, if the promise of God won't be fulfilled in my generation, or the next generation, or even the next generation... But what we do know is that God's word is final, and it is true, and it is eternal. And he has given us a great promise that will be fulfilled. For the season of Advent, we use the liturgical color of blue as a sign of what it means to patiently wait for the Lord. In the last chapter of the Old Testament, in the book of Malachi, we see the messianic promise described by Malachi as a son of righteousness, and that's S-U-N, uh, the bright son of righteousness, and that this son of righteousness is one day going to rise over the horizon with healing on his wings. So the last chapter of the Old Testament, before we get to the Christmas story in the Gospel of Matthew, we see the coming of the Messiah described as a sunrise, that will bring healing to God's people. If you're an early morning riser and you get up before the sun rises, you know that right before the sun peaks over the horizon, the entire sky turns a dark blue. And this is why the color blue was chosen for Advent. Because as we wait for the arrival of the Messiah on Christmas morning, we join ourselves to those who are waiting for the promise of Malachi to come true that the light of the world, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is coming soon to bring light into our world covered by darkness. But before our dark blue of Advent can turn into the bright white color of Christmas, we must enter a season of waiting. A season that many of us, if we're being honest, aren't necessarily looking forward to. There's still a lot of shopping to be done. There's a lot of decorations to be put up, a lot of relatives to visit and to contact. This is a busy time for many of us. But we do these things year in and year out because even though this season is hard, we confess that it's worth it every single year. When I was young, I dreaded the annual tradition of having to sit on the bottom of the stairs and wait to have my picture taken before I could open all my presents but today, my mother has a collection of all the pictures that she took of my sister and I growing up as we sat on the stairs together and awaited Christmas morning together as a family. Now, as a grown man, I see the gift that all those times of waiting have finally given me 
to look back and cherish those memories that we had as a family and celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ together. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit that doesn't receive its reward until God's timing and not our own. One of the greatest joys of the year is coming soon, and Jesus will arrive to bring us the grace of his joy as we celebrate Christmas together. But in the meantime, in this season of Advent, as we await the coming of the Messiah, may God instill in us his fruit of the spirit of patience, patience for one another, patience for his will above our own will, and patience that his word of promise is guaranteed for us in the coming birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.